All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Top 5 Podcast, your favorite pop culture podcast. At least, I hope it is. Annie hopes it is. Hi, Annie. How are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you? I am outstanding. So yeah, you're listening to the show that I mostly do with my sister because we really dig on this stuff. We can't help it. And yeah, it just comes naturally. So we love to talk about this shit. And we are in the middle of a series, Annie, aren't we? Yes, we are. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about that, shall we? Yes. Yeah, so we're doing a Guilty Pleasures series. Um, oh, yeah. Today, we're, uh, we're going to do our Guilty Pleasure television shows. So, And the I movies guess- episode was a little hard for you. What? The movie episode that we did was a little tricky for you. Yes, this one will be a little bit easier. I think yeah. so too, because I I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, there it's guilty pleasure. But I don't necessarily feel embarrassed. To, I feel embarrassed about one thing. That's okay, but that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, why don't you kick us off? So I'll kick us off, and this I know it, it could possibly be on your list, but I'm going to go with the series of Cobra Kai. It is uh-huh. a pleasure. And I say this because every time I ask other people, have you seen Cobra Kai? They look at me like I'm nuts. So like, I'm the only person I know that loves this, this show other than you. So other than I, me. I, of course, I loved the Karate Kid movies as a, as a child. And to this day, I still love them. But Cobra Kai, I just think it's fun, clever, and I'm madly in love with Johnny Lawrence. And like, I can, like, some of his quotes are ridiculous, but they make me, they just, it brings me so much joy. Watching this television show brings me so much joy. So much joy. We have five seasons. When, I don't know when season six is coming out. Probably not until 2025 is the, the, the most recent thing I got and it's the actor strike that's screwing Uh-oh. it all up but I had a <laughs> yeah. I had a bit of a moment last week week before yeah. I don't remember but it was I it was the moment when I realized okay succession is over oh. billions is almost over and I yeah. know that Cobra Kai is whoa what's with the balloons did I do that that was really weird and I know that the Cobra Kai is coming to a close but I don't know when it starts, so I don't know when it's going to end. So yeah. I'm kind of in like, okay, because when when I do this, when I know a show's about to end, that's my favorite. I go back and I watch it from the beginning. And so yeah. I'm like, I don't think I need to do that with Cobra Kai yet because it's going to be a while. But Annie, this is the weirdest shit ever. What? I am dreaming about Cobra Kai. That is weird. That is really weird. And talk about guilty pleasure. Oh, my Lord. Like, I'm old enough to be some of these characters' moms, Mm -hmm. but they're all old enough to drink, so I don't feel bad about it. But (laughs) how can you not have crushes on these people? They're adorable. They're adorable. Just ridiculous. But at the same token, I feel the same way that you do about Mr. Johnny Lawrence, William Zabka. And I wait to redo my list it's sitting in my backpack waiting to be you know reborn but anyway cobra kai is not on my list i can't Um, wait to black beetle because the the guy who plays miguel i can't wait to see him as black beetle blue beetle blue beetle whatever the first latino superhero i love it i love it too and actually i think the parenthood show that he was on when he was a little little kid is yeah showing up on hulu so i might have to go might have to go oh, check cool. that out yeah uh, yeah okay so it's me right yes it's you okay i'm gonna go with the television show that created a fake band that became a real band that came like my favorite band when i was in grade school and that's the monkeys <laughs> from 1966 oh. to 1968 a I didn't know that they only had two seasons like that. And B, I didn't know that the friggin' show won an Emmy award. 
for for best comedy in '68, I think. Like that's crazy. And then they didn't write any of their own songs until the TV show was was gone. And I thought that the movie had came before the TV show, but it didn't. It came after. And this was all one of those like manufactured, you know, band things, except that like Davy Jones already kind of had a career because he was the artful Dodger back in the day, little Davy Jones. But I remember (laughs) this being like the thing that Linda Zernite and I looked forward to the most in the summer was that. Yeah, the Brady Bunch came on, but the monkeys were like, oh, my God, the monkeys would come on Channel 32. And yes, we would watch it every day in the summer. And we've probably seen every single episode because, like I said, it only had two seasons. But I'm sorry, the monkeys music is pretty fun music. They monkeys put out some pretty cool songs like I'm a big fan of I'm Not Your Stepping Stone and Pleasant Valley Sunday and look out here yeah. comes tomorrow and and god love them for you know covering neil diamond things and even you know the dumbest song ever listen to the band like hello I, it's a, a monkey's original song so yeah. yeah it's fun i like it i do too i love it okay Woo-hoo. i would not be embarrassed to say it. it wasn't on my list but i would not be embarrassed to say that one so um, okay, my number four, guilty pleasure, because when I ask people if they've, again, if they've ever seen it, they look at me like, what in the world is that? <laughs> the the, um, the VH1 show, The Surreal Life, that <laughs> ran a reality television show. Yeah. Uh, it had six seasons. Is this correct? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Eight seasons, which I only watched the first six. Yes, I watched the first six seasons of This Real Life. I watched, I was so into this show that I like literally was glued to my sets when the new, you know, when new episodes would come out. Whoa. Here's what I loved about it. One, Jane Weedlin, our go-go, was on season four. Oh, I didn't know that. It was adorable. I loved that on season two, you had Tammy Faye and Ron Jeremy as oh, roommates. God. And they ended up becoming very dear friends. So it was a no. very type of situation. So <laughs> the premise being kind of, you know, six, six or seven, you know, kind of be like people that are no longer you know they were famous now they're not so much famous anymore they have to live together so it's like a it's like a real world for celebrities so oh, it started wow. and i don't remember who gabrielle carteris is but mc hammer and Corey feldman emmanuel lewis vince neal motley Krula, jerry manthe whoever that was in brand rodrick i don't remember who that was either but they all lived together and they had to like you know do some things it's like this, it was just really this wild show and who would have ever ever thought that on season three, Bridget Nielsen and, and Flavor Flay would fall in love? So just like it was, what? It was ridiculous. Yes, it was that that kind of ridiculous. Oh and, my god, Jordan and, Knight from NKO TV. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Adrian Curry, the top model, gets married to Christopher Knight from the Brady Bunch. Just like madness. Oh so, my god. So much fun. I loved it. It was a great show. And that's probably the last time I watched a reality television show. So there wow. you have it. I would go back and rewatch all of those anytime. Was it Brett Michaels on this show too? Or he had his own, he had a different <laughs> show. Like has, you know, yeah, he had his own show. Tyler Posey. He's cute and it's so, still on yep. now oh my god well so but it, I, yeah i'm trying to figure out what they're talking about they're they're saying that it would move to mtv for its eighth season but i don't know and i i don't look at like normal oh my gosh more so so yeah i do love it carrie I, hart oh isn't that pink's husband yes wow this Not is so. hilarious. Yes. 
Okay. Well, I mean, I'm aware of the surreal life. I never watched it. Yeah. No. But the fact that Jane Weedlin is on. I mean. Yeah. Oh my and she's gosh. fantastic. Eric Estrada. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm totally distracted. Okay. okay. So I, I'm going number four with a reality show as well, but I'm like on the complete other side. It's still lots of camp, but, you know, you could learn a thing or two about food. I'm going with the original Iron Chef. That uh, started in 1993 and ended in 2002. And I think it was at the point like that Bobby Flay got on the show that they decided to make an Iron Chef America. But what I what was fun about watching this show was watching it dubbed in English as opposed to there being subtitles on the bottom. And there would still be some subtitles on the bottom. But when you would catch the show dubbed in English... The super flamboyant original, you know, chairman was was a hoot. And, you know, they would, the secret ingredient was crazy stuff sometimes or really simple things like broccoli or salmon. But this would come on, I want to say it would come on late night. And I don't remember it being on the Food Network. I'm trying to remember what channel it was that it was on. But we would watch it in bed before we would go to bed. And I just remember thinking like, this is so silly. And the chairman is such a goof. And the Iron Chefs were so serious. You know, they would never smile. And they always looked like they, you know, wanted to take each other out. But yeah, so between the, the original Iron Chef and Iron Chef America and then Chopped, like these were fun shows because yeah. you got to learn about food in a whole different way and see how creative people can be with, you know, ingredients. Oh, yeah. Yep. That was I, have, a I have not seen that show in a really, really long time. And I would like to figure out where I can watch I, it again. I haven't either. I loved it, too. That's it. Didn't occur <laughs> that one on my list. So, hmm. Now I got to go see if it's on Amazon or Prime or or Netflix yeah. or whatever. Or YouTube even. Yeah. Okay. My number three is also a heartbreak for me, but it is the ninety nineteen ninety four slash ninety five. One season of my so-called life. Oh, geez. I have watched that season Ooh. at least three or four times. Uh -huh. And I'm still like heartbroken that they never, they never renewed it because it was such a, it was a great show. So it's a guilty pleasure because I don't know why it's a guilty. I just, when I, when I talk about it to other people, once again, they have never heard of it. It's too, it's, but I'm like, but it's Jared Leto. And then they okay, look at me. Yeah, like it blows my mind that someone would not have heard yeah. of it. I mean, I think that, I think, what's her face? Claire Danes won a, won a Emmy. Did she? On that show. Or I thought. Young Artist Awards. Print. Yeah, Claire. Yeah, sure. She won a, she won a Golden Globe for Best Actress. Okay. Yeah. In a television show. Wow. That, that won a, Yeah. Best performance by a youth actress in a drama series for the Young Artist Awards too. So, yeah. So she's fantastic. It dealt, you know, the show dealt with all kinds of, you know, issues that happened to the teenagers. And I guess I was, you know, I didn't feel so far removed. You know, I'd only been out of, uh, yeah. out of high school two years at the time, and I just I identified with with her character so much because she because of what she goes through and and you know her friends are hot messes and she's a hot mess and and the boy of her dreams she just you know desperately is so in love with Jordan Catalano everybody knows what that feels like oh yeah so I just I, it's a guilty pleasure because I can watch it over and over again uh, <laughs> and and I'm probably one of the very few people that still does That's so I've only seen a couple episodes here and there but it's it's one of those shows where I think like yeah, I should probably invest in that time because it did, you know, it did really well critics wise and, and people still talk about it. At least people yeah. our age still talk about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, before she became, I'm going to forget her name, Carrie, the Homeland chick. 
Carrie, oh. Carrie Matheson, like one of the most intense roles I've ever seen a person play ever. Yeah, yeah well, you know, it, it's, inter it's interesting to think about like shows that I could put on this list in terms of like, not that they're guilty pleasures, but they're just so easy for me to watch over and over and over again. I've even yeah. like re rethought, rethunk. I, I have rethought the concept of what makes a show one of my favorite shows. And I think that's because when I can get a hold of it and watch it again, I will watch it. And I will watch seasons in succession, no pun intended, because I just can't get enough of that show. And yeah. I think like those will sh uh, they'll be shows that I'll have to own at some point. I don't know how, because I mean, I guess just buy them all on, a on Amazon or just never stop subscribing to Hulu. But like, yeah, I mean, I've watched every season of 24 at uh -huh. least three or four times. And yeah. I've watched seasons five, seven, and one probably nine or 10 times because they're my favorites. And same with, I mean, a couple others on this list. But yeah, anyway, that could be a whole other episode. Just, and it wouldn't even be a, like, what makes a show a favorite show? And how yeah. do you come up with that? Because for the longest time I said, oh, my favorite show of all time is Friday Night Lights. Well, I only watched it one time. I've never gone back to watch it again. How can I truly say that's one of my favorite shows if I only watched yeah. it once? That's a good point. Right? Yeah. Okay. So one more, one more shout out again about my so-called life. Yes. One of the about it was, so one of the characters, w Wilson Cruz was the first openly gay actor to play an openly gay character oh. in a on an American television series. So of course I, so that was a big deal and a big breakthrough. So, you know, that, that having happened in 1994, 95, he was, he was the one, he, he's the one that, uh, that opened the door. Wow. The first so. openly gay actor to play an openly gay character on yes. primetime television. Yeah. He was so good. He was so good on that mm. show. That makes me think of when Ryan Felipe <laughs> was the first non openly gay person to play an openly not quite openly gay soap opera character on oh. life to live. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had that on this list. I had one life to live on this list and I pulled back because again, it's been so long since I've watched any episodes of one life to live, but there was a point in college where I had my classes completely scheduled around four hours worth of soap operas. So I would go to class from eight to 10 ish, 10 30 ish. Uh -huh. I would watch the young and the restless, all my children, one life to live in general hospital, and then go back to class at three. I did that for like 18 months. Wow. Okay. It's number three to me, right? It is. Okay. Uh, this is more a guilty pleasure because of, of the story that's in it. Because the series itself, it, it's a limited series, and, and it's really quite good. It's another Ryan Murphy production. I'm talking about Feud, Betty and Joan from just a couple years ago now on FX, telling the story of what it was like for Betty Davis and Joan Crawford to make, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget the whatever happened to Baby Jane. So going into that movie and then the aftermath of that movie, and boy, talk about two women that just hated each other for years and years and years and years for no reason. They never even worked together until mm -hmm. 1962. And then, you know, like the movie says, it was a feud of the ages. And the, the way that they cast it was really quite clever. I mean, Susan Sarandon is obviously a, a dead ringer for Betty Davis in the modern sense. Like she doesn't have the same eyes, but the mannerisms were were really great. And I wasn't all excited about Jessica Lang as Joan Crawford, but it works. And 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 there's just so much, yeah, it's it's major camp, but not in the way like that mommy dearest was was camp. It's not overacting, it's just trying to, you know, capture the the quirks of these women and in, in the time of their life where they were coming, you know, sort of the golden age of their 
of their careers where parts were hard to get and they had to really fight tooth and nail to to get good parts. And this should have opened doors for them. And it kind of didn't. So, but I, this is a show that I will, like, if I'm getting ready to go to bed and I need something to just kind of be in the background, I'll put that on. And yeah, it, it's it's campy. It's fun. Ryan Murphy just cranks out these crazy good shows. The writing is spectacular. So yeah, I mean, I guess it's not a super guilty pleasure, but the idea that, you know, it's about these two women that hated each other and mm -hmm. then did a movie together. And then I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. It's silly. Yeah. Stanley Tucci is crazy as Jack Warner. I mean, he is such a over the top prick. <laughs> um, but yeah, nonetheless. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't seen that. So I'm gonna put that on my list of, to watch. Yeah. Um, we're at my number two. two. All right, my number two is kind of kind of like your conglomerate of Rob Lowe movies from the last uh -huh. episode. It's the conglomerate of MTV's The Real World Road Rules and then Real World Road Rules Challenge. So All right. I watched. So I, so let's start with MTV The Real World. The first season I recorded in my because that came out my freshman year. I recorded it and I watched it over and over and over again. So that, so there's wow. that. The first two seasons, probably four or five times. And then kind of, you know, here or there didn't, didn't watch a ton of it, but then, and then road rules. I watched the first two seasons religiously as well. And then they came out with these, the challenges where, characters from either real world or road rules teamed up and did challenges against each other. So the entire conglomerate of real world road rules and then the challenges and that to this, they are still, the series is still live to this day. Oh, wow. Uh, really? I'll I did not know that. Villains, you had the good guys, you know, there was one season as the good guys versus the villains, you know, uh, I just I can't explain why. Obviously, there's there's appeal to it because um, it's still airing. But why a near fifty year old woman is still thinks this is a cool show? Uh, and I would go back <laughs> I would watch the first season of The Real World again right now because I loved it so much. I love those oh characters. Gosh. And it was it was like that was the birth of reality television. It's the first time anything like that had been done. Yeah, um, and it was real. That's the other thing is like it was real because they they there were like serious tension. There were serious like how do I get along with somebody that I have absolutely nothing in common with? Yeah, so it, it did a lot. For, that season did the first that first season did a lot for making people understand each other a little bit better. But it's still like it's it's a guilty pleasure because it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I it, think. I was the, the San Francisco cast was had a gay storyline, right? Or there were, uh, I can't remember exactly how that went down. I'm trying to remember. Yes. That might've been the one season that I did watch. Yeah. Because one of the people would, was HIV positive. That's right. That's what it was. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, I watched, I watched that season. Cause that had Puck, the, the villain Puck who was a disgusting and he was kicked out. Oh, so I did see that season. And then when they went to London, I, I think I stopped watching when they went to London. And, but anyway, I, it, it's ridiculous. The, 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 the shows are crazy ridiculous, but the real world road rules challenges shows that now is just, I think it's now it's just the challenge. I just love watching them compete in these crazy, ridiculous challenges. It's, it's a guilty pleasure because it's serves no like intellectual <laughs> purpose. Yeah. No, I feel you. And, oh, I uh, and yeah, I mean, that was, that was the thing that opened up the door to the reality television or, yeah. or what our dad used to say is the dumbing down of America. Yeah. yeah so crazy. Real world road rules. There was a student that worked for me at Webster University that was on the Chicago season of real world. 
I oh. think he was the audio dude for that show. I did not see that season because yeah. I, well, for other reasons, but anyway. Um, all right. So that's my number two. Okay. Wait, I got to write that down. That's real world, real world road rules. My number two, it's a preposterous concept that was cast really, really well. And so it became exciting and fun to watch. And, and that is the Fox drama Prison Break featuring the ridiculously hot Wentworth Miller. And I can't remember the name of the guy that plays his brother. But I mean, that show was so well cast with crazy freaky characters that were amazing. But like, who robs a bank so that they can go to prison because they know their brother's guilty and they're going to break him out. Like preposterous concept. And then now, you know, you're going to, you need things. So you need people to help you. So now instead of just breaking your brother out, you've got to break like 12 people out. And it just, I mean, and I'm going to tattoo the specs of the entire prison all over my body because I'm an architect and I'm figuring this out before I get arrested for robbing a bank, which he actually didn't rob. He just like fired a gun in a bank nonetheless. So stupid, but oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I am hanging on to every word that comes out of these guys' mouths because mm -hmm. it is so compelling because they cast it so well with very colorful, ridiculous, asinine, crazy characters that fit like it you know it made sense and it's kind of this uh very strange buddy group it's like if you took that tower heist movie with ben stiller <laughs> and you got that group of people together and you put them in a prison just take the comedy part out of it because i'm sorry wentworth miller is just really hot and yeah so it's it was a lead into 24 back in the day and before we even, you know, when you could pay for DVR to be part of your cable service, anybody remember that? Oh, <laughs> and know. even when we, when we went, when we had a TiVo, I finally bought a TiVo in Nashville, but I, I would plant myself at the TV to, I think it was, I think it was American Idol prison break and 24 wow. at some point. I don't recall exactly, but. Prison Break was the lead into 24, and I was a huge 24 fan. Still am. I will be a fan of 24 till the day I die. But yeah, it's just, <laughs> just a ridiculous concept of a show, but it's awesome. But it's awesome. That's the whole thing. And, and what Miller is really, really. Yeah, is, but nobody else does. Okay, so I do have an honorable mention. Ah, yes. Uh, I, I am going to admit it. I like game shows. I like them a lot. I am not embarrassed about that. So this is not an embarrassing guilty pleasure. But my guilty pleasure is I love Family Feud. Ah, I yeah. love Family Feud. So that is my guilty pleasure game show. <laughs> and my favorite. And I love the Richard Dawson ones most of all. And I also love watching a game show bloopers. But the, my favorite one was we asked 100 Americans, name something in your house that you talk to. And I'm talking to my television saying, your TV, you talk to your television. And I'm telling them that this is the item in your house that you talk to as I'm talking to it. And that was, and it ended up being the number one answer, obviously. Of course. Uh, I, so I'm talking to the television, calling the person an idiot. So, but I just, I, it, it's a, it, to me, it's like a puzzle show, but we watch it together as a, as a family. And then we had to stop watching because the, the newer seasons, it's like the, some of the answers are just like bring up adult toys and, you know, oh, God. really stupid, inappropriate. Like, this is not fun. family I'm, feud. This is adult feud. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, what fun is that? But donk a donks or whatever it is you're talking, you know, it just, it got too, it was, it was, it, it got too sexual <clears throat> and it wasn't fun anymore. So, but my, that's my honorable mention, Richard Dawson's Family Feud. I'll watch reruns of that all, all day long. I love it. Well, okay. I was going to say that my honorable mention is another prison show. 
that's called Oz from HBO. But instead, okay. I'm going to talk about the show that I discovered on one of my trips to visit you that Keith would put on after dinner. And that's that America's, what is it called? America Talks or America's something? America Says. America Says. Yes. I love that show. And we have the game show network. It pops up on our on our Samsung smart TV. And <laughs> it just kind of showed up one day. And I'm like, oh my God, I totally love this show. Which yeah. I think they don't film it anymore. Because like, I would totally want to be on it. Because it's hilarious. Yeah. But oh my gosh, that is just, <laughs> it's, it's kind of Family Feud-esque. It um, is, yeah. But, you know, they give you some hints and you have to guess the, you know, fill in the blanks. Name something Leonardo DiCaprio is known for. Titanic. Yes. Oh, hello. That one's not hard. <laughs> but my gosh, I mean, uh, some of the things that 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 are shared are just hilarious and they're so obvious except when they're not yes we do love that show america says america says okay so my number one is is a guilty pleasure because i still go back and rewatch my some of my favorite episodes and i love the certain episodes more than other and, and certain seasons more than others but I, what i'm talking about is the television show glee Oh, yeah. Loved wow. Glee. Now, specifically, I loved the first three seasons of Glee. Once they, once the main cast graduated from high school, I didn't love it as much, but I still watched it through to the end. Even though I hated Rachel Berry from beginning to end, I still loved the show. Mm -hmm. And a certain amount of heartbreak attached to this because it's like what this, it's like the cast was cursed because... Yeah of what happened with a lot of the cast members, but I still, the way they did their mashups, the way they brought oh. back some of the, you know, the way they certain episodes focused on, like, you know, you had the Madonna episode. And so you had the Britney episode, but it's a, more of a, over a love of music than the show itself. I just loved yeah. the music. I loved it so much. And it's a guilty pleasure because it was, it was, it was popular for a while and then it got to be a bad show. And then all of the, you know, when the quarterback died, when Corey Monteith died, it was just heartbreaking. And, and then, anyway, but I, as, in terms of a guilty pleasure, I still have a ton of Glee music on my playlist. I still go back and I'll YouTube my favorite scenes. I will watch the safety dance scene oh. over, over and over again. I love it so much. You know, so, they shot that at the, it's my understanding, they shot that at the Eagle Rock Mall, and Charles happened to be in that mall the day they shot that segment. I mean, um, and I don't think, he didn't know, like, what he was seeing until months later, and I'm watching the show, and he happens to hop in, and he's like, oh my god. Oh, man. I think I was there. Totally jelly, but yeah, I'm with you on that. I did not put it on my list, but I I totally I get all of the things behind it. And what I loved about that show was that it, you know, like my so-called life, it tackled oh, you know, te contemporary high school issues. And I love what they I think my favorite episode ever is when I'm trying to think of how this goes down. Like Kurt's dad is kind of starting to date Finn's mom. Yeah. And there's there's tension in the in the house about Kurt being gay and yeah. Finn does something stupid and dad stands up for his kid in a yeah. way that just like warms my heart so much. Yes. Um, and I love that and I love the little romance between Kurt and Blaine. Blaine. His name Blaine? Blaine. Um, Darren Chris. Yeah, I mean, and and mashups. Yeah, seriously. Wow. So fun. This show was so fun. So beautiful. In yeah. fact, when we get off the phone, I'm going to go watch the safety dance. You do that. I'm going to. Okay, so number one to me, right? Yes, number one to you. I this is a guilty pleasure because every time I watch this show, I feel really, really guilty because Seth MacFarlane 
I don't know how he gets away with the shit that he gets away with on Family Guy. He must have somebody in Hollywood by the balls so bad that he can get away with all this Jay and Silent Bob crazy, completely inappropriate jokes that you laugh out loud and then you're like, oh shit, I feel really bad that I just laughed at that. And then you know, no, I really didn't, but yeah, I kind of did. Every time I watch that show, something happens and I laugh out loud and then I'm like, oh, did anybody see me or hear me <laughs> laughing at that? Because that's terrible. And I'm sorry, <laughs> the bird is the word when he gets into the surfing bird episode. That's just like the craziest <laughs> shit ever. And that was a song from grade school that I had on my Goofy Greats album. And again, Linda Zernite and I thought that was the craziest song that ever existed in this world. And we just had a hootenanny about it. But yeah, I, I'm not a regular watcher of Family Guy. But when I do, I am scolding myself <laughs> for laughing because just the shit that he comes up with is outer limits and just completely and totally wrong. But nonetheless, how can you not laugh your ass off at anything on Family? Seth MacFarlane is like the king of voices and characterizations. Even like, you know, stuff that he's done in the movies. I thought Ted was <laughs> just hilarious. Hilarious. Um, God, it was so funny. Yep. So crazy. Yeah. So there you go. Guilty pleasure TV shows that not really feeling so guilty, but nonetheless. <clears throat> All right. So recap, my honorable mention was Family Feud. Because they love puzzles. And then from five to one, Cobra Kai, Surreal Life, My So-Called Life, the MTV Real World Road Rules slash Challenge, and then number one, Glee. Love it. So I swapped out my honorable mention after you went with Family Feud and I went with America Says, although it was originally the prison drama Oz from HBO. And then five to one, I've got The Monkees. The original Iron Chef, Feud, Betty and Joan, Prison Break, and the ever raunchy and delightful Family Guy, which was also a Fox show, and Glee is a Fox show. That's kind of funny. How did that happen? Ah, okay. Guilty Pleasure TV shows is in the books. Well, it will be shortly, and then it will be online. And you'll be listening to it, which you're doing right now, actually. So thank you, as always, for uh, hanging out for me and Annie on uh, this fine Sunday for us. But I don't know when you're listening to it. It could be on a Sunday. Could be on a Wednesday. It could be on a Friday. Whatever. Whenever you're listening, we're so very happy that you are listening. And thank you for listening. And if you like our show, which... I hope you do because you're listening. A rating and review would be delightful wherever you listen to podcasts. And like they say on the newsworthy, share it with a friend and help other people hear the show as well. So for Annie Pruitt, I'm Chris McPeak. You've been listening to the penultimate show about pop culture, and that is the Top 5 Podcast. And we'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Ha ha!